Hey class, what I want to do in this first video for you is talk about applications of the normal distribution. And what I'm going to do here is kind of like a high level introduction to it. Um, and then I have some more videos below that are going to show you how to, in much more detail, how to read a uh, statistical table that's shown as well as work application methods. Okay, so what we're going to do in here uh, in this lecture here is we're going to find and interpret the area under a normal curve. That's all we're going to do, just like we were doing um, in a lot of the previous other lectures. Okay, so to do this going forward, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about something called standardizing a normal random variable. Okay, suppose that the random variable x is normally distributed, so I'm telling you it follows the bell curve, with some mean mu and some standard deviation sigma. Okay, like for example, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit, but like IQ score. So uh, IQ scores, uh, the intelligent quotient, models a very specific type of intelligence. And what we're saying is that IQ scores follow uh, a normal distribution, that bell curve, and the average IQ is 100 with the standard deviation of 15. Okay, so we have, if we could let X be like the IQ of a randomly selected person, all right, we know that IQ is normally distributed. The person's IQ is some random variable. We don't know what it is, but on average, people have an IQ of 100 with a standard deviation of 15. Then we define this new variable, okay? This, this is what's called the z-score. We've actually talked about this before in class, like weeks and weeks and weeks ago. And, and what a z-score was, was, um, it was the example when I talked about like teacher incomes. Do you remember that? But anyways, all a z-score is, is you take the x value, the value of the variable you get, you subtract away the mean, and you divide by the standard deviation. Super easy. It turns out that this mathematical transformation, this new variable z, this z variable is also normally distributed, also follows the bell curve. But what's nice about it is that the average is 0, and the standard deviation is 1 for these z's. So like, all of a sudden, this becomes like the easiest two numbers to work with. Okay, so this random variable z is said to be what we call a standard normal distribution. Okay, it follows a standard normal distribution. And remember, it, so it's the z has an average of zero, standard deviation of one. So this is what that standard normal curve looks like. It's centered at zero, and then its standard deviations are just one. That's it. So we have this table. What's really great about it is so you can take any variable. Hopefully you can see where this is going. We can take any variable and transform it into a standard variable, z. And then what we do is we have this table that gives the area under the standard normal curve for values to the left. So values to the left of a specific z-score as shown in this figure. Okay. So let's go back here. Um, so IQ scores can be modeled by a normal distribution with mean 100 and standard deviation 15. All right, an individual who has an IQ score of 120 is what we can say, just calculating the z-score for this, is 1.33 standard deviations above the mean. So that person's z-score is their x value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So you take the value that the person has, well, the person is 120 IQ score, subtract away the mean, which is 100, divide by the standard deviation, and you would get 1.33333 if you kept doing this. Whenever you do these z-scores, this is important to always round it to the right. Okay, so then what we can do here is the table that's attached in the classroom, what we can do is we can read the area, okay, under the standard normal curve to the left of that value. So you take your table out, and you're going to notice there's a row header and a column header. Well, the column header is the first two digits, okay, of the z-score. So the z-score was 1.3. So on the table, on this row column here, excuse me, on this column here, find 1.3. And then the row column up at the top is the last value, okay, of the z-score, which is a 3. So you're going to go to point zero three for the last digit. Now you're going to go down this row and across this column, and you're going to see the value 0 0.9082. All right, what that means is 90.82% of people Right, have an IQ score below that, below that, okay? Or another interpretation of that is, is the probability that if we were to randomly grab an adult and their IQ would be less than 120, would be 0 0.9082.
And don't worry, we're going to work a ton more of these examples in the coming months, right? In the coming lectures of the coming class. All right, so you could use the complement rule to find the area to the right here. Okay, so the table only gives the area to the left, but if you wanted to find the area above 120, well, you would just do 1 minus the area to the left, 0 0.0918. Answer. So 1 minus 0 0.9082 to 0 0.0918. All right, so the thing that's great about the standard normal curve is it has the same properties as the normal distribution. All right, always, always, always. Um, and so that's how we can relate these areas that I just showed you back to solving that problem about IQ scores. All right, so let's just do some quick more examples, and I encourage you to follow along and pause the video as I do these problems to see if you can get them as well. So I want to find the area under the standard normal curve to the left of z is equal to negative 0 0.38. Well, you're going to have to find the negative side of the z table, which is negative 0 0.38. So you find the first two digits, negative 0 0.3. The last digit is an 8. You go down and over, and where they intersect, you should see 0 0.3528. That's the answer right there. So the area to the left of that, all the way to the left of that value, is 0 0.3520. Okay, so remember to find the area to the right. You just look it up uh, and you subtract the area to the left that you find always, always. So find the area under the standard normal curve to the right of z is equal to 1.25. All right, so I want to find the area to the right. So I'm going to go on my table. Last digit is a 5. First two digit is 1.2. Where they intersect is 0 0.8944. Well, remember, that's the area to the left of this, to the left. So to find the area to the right, you do 1 minus that. So 1 minus 0 0.8944 is 0 0.1056. Always, always. All right, suppose I ask you to find the area um, under the standard normal curve between two values, between. Okay, so if you want to find the area between two values, um, what you're going to do is you're going to look up the two corresponding z-scores. You're going to find those two areas. And we're going to subtract them. So you always start with the higher number. So if you were to go to that z-score table and find 2.94, the area to the left would be 0 0.9984. If you were to go to the table and look up the value of minus 1.02, the area to the left of that is 0 0.1539. You would subtract these two and you get 0 0.8445. So that's how you find the area between. Okay, so just to recap, how do you find the area to the left? What I do is I draw the curve and I shade in the area I'm looking at. You convert the value of x that you have to a z score. Use that table that's attached in the classroom to find uh, the row and column that correspond to that z. The area to the left of x is that value where those rows and columns intersect. You can also use technology to find the area. And I am going to do a lecture uh, for you after you watch all these basic lectures showing you how to use your graphing calculator for this. So, so pay attention to that one too. All right, you find the area to the right. Okay, you're going to con convert the value of x that you have to a z-score. You're going to use the table that's attached in the classroom to find the area to the left. Okay, then what you're going to do to find the area to the right, okay, is you just do 1 minus that area to the left. I will show you how to use your calculator for this as well. All right, to find the area in between two z-scores, convert each value to z-scores, look up their areas, look up the area, and then subtract the two areas. So you always do the higher value minus the lower value. And finally, I will also show you how to use your graphing calculator for this. All right, class. Thank you very much.